I'm having weight loss surgery in Mexico, Erica. What do I take? Hey y'all, hey, it's Erica with Time to Shrink. Let's talk about what to take with us to surgery in Mexico. Now y'all, I did a video of what not to take to the hospital, but it was not specific to Mexico, and I've had some requests, so we're gonna do it. So we're just gonna go over everything. We're gonna go over clothes first. I left on a Friday, and I came home on a Wednesday. Let's say that's five nights, okay? So, clothes-wise, you're gonna pack for five nights, just like you're going anywhere else. However, you're not packing your cute vacation clothes, y'all. We're packing big, comfy. First, yeah, I'm pulling them out. No! No, y'all. These are cute. These are not surgery panties. I'm talking pull out the big granny panties. The huge ones, the ones that you would wear on a period, not the cute ones, and pack plenty of them. Big, stretchy, loose. You don't want anything tight on a surgical belly, okay? So, big granny panties. Next, bra. You want, same idea, the biggest, stretchiest, loosest sports bra that you own. And if you don't own one, get you one. Bigger than you think you need. Big, old, loose, ugly, comfy sports bra. Because right here is one of the surgical scars, right between my boobs. So I did not want anything on it. I really just didn't wear a bra at all for the first few days, but... I did take these and this is what I wore when I had to have a bra on and what I wore home on the plane. So big, big, loose. Next, you don't want any, like, I'm going to step back. See, I have yoga pants on. I have tight compression yoga pants on, y'all. No, that is not what you want. You don't want anything tight on that belly. It's gonna be big and bloated and it's gonna have incisions in it and it's gonna be sore. What you want is a big, comfy, loose dress. One of my biggest LuLaRoe dresses. These are what I took. I took big LuLaRoe dresses that have no form, no fitting. They're soft as butter and they didn't pull tight anywhere. I took a bunch of these. That's pretty much all I took. I did take a couple pair of super loose yoga pants just in case I wanted them, but I didn't want them on my belly. I wore these dresses, these big loose dresses. Next thing you're going to want clothes-wise is some loose fuzzy socks, just some comfy fuzzy socks for if your feet get cold or if you're not a socks person you don't have to have these but i definitely use the heck out of my comfy fuzzy socks and then a pair of slippers a pair of slippers that you can throw away that you can leave there because you're going to be walking 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 right we have to walk a ton after surgery walk 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 so the slippers with hard bottoms gotta have hard bottoms and that you can just throw away these cost like five bucks at tj maxx I could have just thrown them away. Turns out my hospital in Mexico gave me actual slippers with hard bottoms, so I didn't use these. But I suggest taking them because every hospital is not necessarily going to give you free slippers. A lot of them will give you little footy things with um, non uh, with skid stuff on the bottom. I don't like how those feel, so I suggest these. I also suggest taking a really loose, comfy robe. Loose comfy robe because you're going to have a gown on that you may or may not be able to take off. So I would take some comfy pajamas, but you may or may not be able to put them on. But this can for sure go over just, you don't even have to put your arms in, just goes over like this so that your backside is covered because the gowns are open in the back. And most of us larger girls, those gowns don't cover our backside. They're supposed to wrap around, but they don't. So, a loose robe like this that you can just put over your shoulders when you're walking in the hallways because you're going to do a lot of walking, right? Tons of walking. Please. Nurse Erica says, please do tons of walking for me. Okay. So, that's it in the clothes department. 
you also are going to Mexico, so you may want to take a bathing suit. I don't know where you're staying. Are you staying on the beach? Are you staying in a hotel? I stayed on the beach. I did not take a bathing suit, and I don't really regret that because I just wore those big loose get the big loose dresses. I don't think I would have wanted a tight bathing suit on my belly, but that's just something to throw out there. You might want a bathing suit. Enough clothes for all the days. Plenty of loose, comfy under clothes. Some loose, comfy pajamas. The key here is loose, loose. Okay, let's go into toiletries. The next thing you're gonna need, this is stuff that you're going to want at the hospital and afterwards. You are going to want to take your toiletries. Shampoo, deodorant, another deodorant. You probably don't need two. I don't know why I have two here. Toothpaste, toothbrush. Dry shampoo, perhaps, in case you don't feel like a shower and you just need some. Sunscreen. You're going to Mexico. Sunscreen. Face wash, face stuff, face lotions. Basically, just all your toiletries. A brush, you know, shampoo, body wash, all the nice toiletries that you're going to need. If you take a daily medication that you absolutely have to take, Put your meds in your little divider. You don't need to take your vitamins. Don't take your vitamins to Mexico with you. You're not gonna take them. It's, you don't need to take them with you. But if you take a daily medicine, take them with you. I have meds that I absolutely have to take every day. So take those with you. You generally wanna travel with medications in the bottle that they, the prescription came in. Sometimes at the airport they could give you a hard time. So technically you should probably travel with them in the bottles with the prescription on the label. I traveled like this with mine divided into my days and it wasn't a problem, but technically. You're definitely going to want to take chapstick. This is just a Burt's Bees chapstick. I also took one of these EOS chapsticks. You're going to be really, really dry. So you definitely want a chapstick. I took a couple different kinds because I didn't know if one would smell weird to me. And trust me, your sense of smell is super heightened after surgery. The other thing I took was some essential oils that I had. I am a big believer in essential oils and one of the issues is nausea after surgery and if you take a peppermint roller, peppermint essential oil, or you could even get like a Vicks Vapor Rub, same idea, you want the smell of the peppermint. If you're feeling nauseous, you can just open it and sniff it and even put a little bit right under your nose so you're sniffing it. If you get a headache, there's a couple things I want you to take because we're not going to be taking meds for headaches necessarily. So the peppermint oil, again, you can put it right here and on the back of your neck. It really helps with headaches, headaches and nausea, peppermint oil. And then also I want you to take a little container of sea salt. This, can, this exact container, Malden sea salts, this is $4 for this container and it is full of sea salt. You can take a baggie, whatever. I think it's worth it on Amazon for these. But um, after surgery and even a little pre-surgery, we tend to get into ketosis because our carbs are so low and that can cause headaches from low sodium. So if you're getting headaches and the peppermint oil doesn't do it pretty fast, if you take a little bit of this salt, put it under your tongue, don't swallow it, put it under your tongue and let it dissolve. Your body will, it'll dissolve right there under your tongue. Your body will absorb it and it will help get rid of that headache really, really fast. Low sodium is a huge factor for headaches for people in this, at surgery, after surgery, a little before surgery, even pre-op. If you're pre-op and you're getting a headache, salt, I swear y'all, a little bit of salt under the tongue. This is my little nurse advice. It's the little tip and trick that is actually a huge tip and trick because headaches are no fun. So salt, y'all. Take it with you. Also, after surgery, sometimes plain water just doesn't taste so good. Sometimes we can handle, we don't like it because it's too cold or just the flavor. Trust me, your senses are heightened. So take some water enhancers, your favorite water enhancers. I'm just going to show you a couple examples of what I have. This is one that I order. It comes in lots of different flavors. It's no carb. It has the cleanest ingredients of any water enhancer I've ever found. Stir. On Amazon. They're not that pricey and they're they're really the best cleanest. Another option, this true lime and true lemon comes in a lot of different flavors. This is one one of my kids likes. So I suggest water enhancers. Just take a handful of them. You don't know what you're gonna like. What you liked before surgery may be very different than what you like after surgery. 
So, you know, just take some examples. And then, generally, we are clear liquids for five days or so, so you really don't need to worry about protein in those first days. You're really worrying about hydration. So, water enhancers, even like Gatorade Zeros, Powerade Zeros, you can get once you're there. You can't take those with you unless you buy the kind that you can mix. You can only take so much on the airplane, right? But if you have a doctor who puts you on full liquids after three days and you're going to be there for a couple of days that you're supposed to be eating some protein, I would suggest going to the vitamin shop or GNC and getting some individual packets of protein. This Quest brand has lots of different flavors and it tastes pretty good. It's pretty low carb. There's other brands also. I'm not going to show you a million different things, just giving you the idea of just maybe take a few. I think I took three. I maybe had... I think I had one, but I didn't have anything for those first few days other than liquids, clear liquids. Speaking of clear liquids and water not necessarily tasting great, sometimes broths will taste good. So you can get little broth like bouillon, ugh, bouillon cubes, any kind of broth um, powders. My favorite is this one. Okay. My favorite is this one, Lono Life. Lono Life. It comes in chicken, beef. Chicken broth, beef broth, and then some different flavored ones. It is a really good quality, and you just rip it, add it to water, and stir. Really good quality, and it has 10 grams of protein. So, get a little bit of protein in with this, but I like how it tastes is really. This is Thai curry bone broth, and you have to like Thai curry to like this one. It's very, very much Thai curry. I really liked this one, but right after surgery, for some reason, I just really liked it. But they have really good quality beef ones too. Again, Amazon. I'm an Amazon girl. Um, what else? Da, 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 da. This is my travel was my travel bag for the airplane, my extra bag. I took my passport, my wallet, and put it in a really tiny crossbody purse that could go into this because you can only take two carry-ons, this and then your carry-on suitcase. So I put my little crossbody purse into this. One, it was going to be light and easy for me to carry. Two, it fit into this. So this is my computer bag. I took this. I put my laptop in here. I put one book in here, which I did not read, but I took a book. And then all my cords, all the different cords. Mexico, the same cords as the U.S., the same plugs as the U.S. So all your computer cords, all your phone cords. I suggest taking like a long phone cord because... You don't know where the plug is at, by the bed and all of that stuff. So, you know, you want your phone and the cords and laptop. I did watch some shows in the hotel on my laptop. So, like YouTube type stuff. So, I did take a computer. Some people say you don't need to, you don't have to do that. You obviously don't have to do that. But I enjoyed having that something to watch. Oh, one more thing, y'all. I don't know why I didn't say this one whatever the toiletries, but just a little warning. When you do the swallow test, if they do a swallow test after surgery on you, the stuff tastes really, really nasty. That's just a warning. You have to drink it fast. Warning. But what I'm talking about right now is wet wipes. Wet wipes for your bottom. That stuff goes right through you. Not every patient, but many, many of us get diarrhea from the prep that you have to drink for the swallow study and the toilet paper in almost every hospital, Mexico, US, wherever you go. For some reason, they like to give you sandpaper. So this is something I highly suggest. These are just Target brand cheapies. You can get whatever kind you want, but I suggest taking one of these. I did not and my bottom was raw. I had like diarrhea for like that entire day, like eight times and my bottom was raw. Take some wet wipes, y'all. I'm sure I forgot something. If I did and you went to Mexico and you're like, why didn't she mention this? She should have mentioned this. Share it down below for the people that haven't been yet and are trying to get their list together. I, I'm sure I missed something. I don't know. Oh, I know what else I took. I did take a notebook just to be able to write my thoughts. If you're someone that likes to journal, take a notebook. You might have questions to write down that you want to ask later, or you might want to journal your experience. I did take a notebook and some markers. All right. I hope that was helpful. I really, really do. I think I hit on all of the main stuff. I am so excited for you that you're taking this step.
step. I would love if you told me when your surgery was so I could be praying for you and thinking of you. I'm sending so many positive vibes and I'm so excited for you. What a great step in your health. Take your health in your own hands and get healthier. All right, bye. I'll be back with another video before long.